This video is on the objective calculate the test statistic or the t-value or t-score for a two-mean hypothesis test. And this is for population variances assumed equal. All right. And when the population variances or population standard deviations are assumed to be equal, um, we're going to be pooling our sample standard deviations to make an estimate of those po of those population standard deviations. Right? So we're going to make a pooled estimate called SP, which you saw in the first video, hopefully. Um, I've done one video on this objective before. And then after you find that pooled standard deviation, SP, you can then go about finding the test statistic for you, you know, the difference in sample means. Now in that first video, I wrote out this information. Right, let's go to some paper here first before I get to the question. So this is when you had two populations, right? This is when you had two populations with unknown standard deviations, unknown. But when those population standard deviations are assumed to be equal, All right, and this is called you know the pooled scenario, as opposed to the non-pooled or unpooled scenario you might have seen in other videos. And last time, you know, in the first video on this objective, I drew these pictures and explained what was happening and how we had to find this pooled estimate then of the standard deviation of the populations. SP with this crazy calculation here, which isn't too terrible, right, and I'll go over the calculator. Um, and then we looked at the distribution of x1 bars minus x2 bars in these pooled scenarios, and the distribution of the difference in sample means would be a student's t distribution with n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom. All right, and this was different than when it was non-pooled. So you gotta really pay attention. Where and n1 and n2 are just the sizes of the samples one and two, sample for, the sample taken from population one and the sample taken from population two. And then our test statistic is again a t-score, and it's calculated this way. It's you know what's the what's the difference in our sample our sample means minus what's the assumed difference in the population means from the null hypothesis and that'll be zero All right, so really you don't need this part so you can just take the difference in your sample means divided by and then this pooled standard deviation estimate times the square root of one over the first sample size plus one over the second sample size and uh, all I'm going to be doing in this video here is calculating this test statistic and also stating the number of degrees of freedom right for the distribution involved this n1 plus n2 minus 2 right. oh and I also want to calculate uh, before I do any of that though I have to calculate this pooled estimate of the population standard deviations SP right. so let's get to the question again if you'd like to see more about it what they have to say um, Click on more instruction, look at their videos, their notes, their examples, you know, hopefully those help you out. So here, this is, this is kind of an easy one. I, uh, later on, you're going to have to figure it out for yourself, you know, what kind of a test are you doing? Is it pooled or unpooled? <clears throat> but here they're telling us, again, we are doing a two-mean pooled t-test. So again, that just means the population standard deviations are unknown and but they're assumed to be equal right? again that is why we're doing this pooled test as opposed to an unpooled or non-pooled right, so we have two samples uh, the first sample has a size of 20 the second sample has a size of 12 and uh, we need to find the sample standard deviations for these samples and then use those to calculate a pooled standard deviation called SP, which I'll get to in a second. So uh, for sample one, you know, the sample standard deviation is 13.5, the sample mean is 43. For 
for sample 2, the standard deviation is 12.8 and the sample mean is 36. And they're asking us to calculate what, what would the test statistic be for this test and what would be the degrees of freedom you know, for the student's t distribution that we'd end up looking at, that we'd end up using. Alright, so I'm going to write this information down on a piece of paper and uh, we'll figure it out. Now, I'll write down all the stuff we just saw. Um, you know, we got sample one. The size of sample one, n one, is twenty. The mean of the first sample, x bar one, x one bar is forty three. The standard deviation of the first sample, s one, is thirteen point five. And then for the second sample, right, n two, um, the size was twelve. The second sample mean, x2 bar, was 36. And s2, the, se the second sample standard deviation, was 12.8. So again, because of this, the fact that we are assuming, you know, even though we don't know what they are, but we're assuming that the population standard deviations are equal in this case. So that means we're going to be having to pool these together and create this pooled estimate of the of the of these standard deviations called SP. And using the formula up there, it's this big square root of you know n1 minus one, so 19 times s1 squared, so times 13.5 squared, plus then n2 minus one, so 11. Uh, times s2 squared, right, so times 12.8 squared, and then all of that divided by the 19 plus 11. All right, if you take n1 minus 1 plus n2 minus 1, that's the same thing as n1 plus n2 minus 2, uh, and that's 30 right, in the denominator. And I'm going to punch this in. Right, pull up a calculator and we're doing the square root. Uh, in, the, in the numerator, since it has multiple terms, I'm going to put it in parentheses. Uh, we have 19, uh, so in parentheses here, I got 19 times 13.5 squared plus, and then the 11 times 12.8 squared. Right, and then I close parentheses, that's all the numerator, and notice it is still all underneath the square root bar, the square root symbol, and then all that divided by 30, all of that is still inside the square root. Right, so approximately 13.248, if I round to three decimal places, you know, that's, that's the pooled standard deviation. Now I'm going to leave this up on my calculator screen because I'm going to use it again when I calculate the test statistic for the difference in our two sample means. All right. So now the, the distribution of the difference in sample means, you know, the distribution of x1 bar minus x2 bar, would be a student's t distribution with 30 degrees of freedom. That's this n1 plus n2 minus 2. So that's one part of our answer, right? The number of degrees of freedom for the t distribution we're going to be using in our test. And then the other part of the answer is, all right, what's, what's that test statistic? I remember that was a t score. And uh, got that here. All right, that was this calculation. So remember the t score is the numerator is just the difference in the sample means, you know, so x1 bar minus x2 bar, 43 minus 36, divided by, and then you have the that pooled standard deviation outside the square root, so I'll just write sp again, times the square root of 1 over the first sample size, so 1 over 20, plus 1 over the second sample size, 1 over 12, all of that in the square root. And I'll pop this on my calculator. Now the numerator is just uh, 7. Right? 43 minus 36 is just 7. So my numerator is 7. 
divided by. And then since the denominator has two factors, two parts of the product, I'm going to put it in parentheses. So in parentheses, I then have SP. Now this 13.24762872, that's SP. So I'll just go second and then my previous answer, right? Times the square root of 1 over 20 plus 1 over 12. And again, making sure all of that is inside the square root down there. And then I get out of the square root, close the parentheses on the denominator. So the T score is about 1.45 if I round it to two decimal places like I'm seeing they're doing. So these are both parts of my answer. The T-score, right, the test statistic for the difference in our sample means and the number of degrees of freedom for our T-distribution in, in the test. Um, and all this is telling me, remember what a T-score is, is that uh, the, uh, the difference in our sample means <clears throat> is 1.45 standard deviations above what's assumed to be the average difference in sample means from the null hypothesis. And that's not that far away from the mean. All right, so there's a good, I'm, I'm, I'm saying there's probably a good chance here that I wouldn't reject the null hypothesis. You know, this isn't, this isn't very far away from zero in terms of standard deviations. So there's probably a good chance that I won't be in a rejection region and I would not reject the null hypothesis and stuff like that. Now going back to, you know, it's a multiple choice here, going back here, which one gives me a test statistic of 1.45 and 30 degrees of freedom? And that's this very last one. Test statistic 1.45, 30 degrees of freedom. Wonderful. And again, that's all you're asked to do here they, you know, when they're telling you it's a pooled test. But later on in future problems, I'm sure, you know, you're going to have to say for yourself, you're going to have to figure it out. You know, am I running a pooled t-test or non-pooled t-test? And it all has to do with whether or not they're assuming the population standard deviations or population variances are equal. If, if the population variances are assumed to be equal, you're running a pooled test calculating that SP. If the population variances are not assumed to be equal, you're running a non-pooled test and not calculating that SP. Okay. And read over your answer explanations, of course, and you know, hope and hopefully this these videos I'm making and and your uh, more instruction, hopefully all this stuff helps you out uh, when you're doing these on your own. And thank you very much for watching.